Hey, it's Chris from Chris Beat Cancer. Got a letter on the blog today that I wanted to answer on YouTube. And this is from Cindy. She writes, Hey Chris, I came across your website when I was Googling these exact words. Not doing chemo. I've been diagnosed with stage 2 breast cancer. Uh, all the lymph nodes are clean. The margins were good. From my pathology report, I've been told that my cancer is classified as a 9, meaning it's a very aggressive cancer. I was diagnosed in August 2011. Since that, then, I've had a double mastectomy and a port put in. I have been told I will need 3 to 6 months of the strongest chemo due to aggressive cancer. I'm very scared about doing chemo. I feel that it will destroy what is left of my immune system. Little background info on me. In July 2009, I was bit by a tick and infected with Lyme disease and mycoplasma. I've been fighting it ever since. My LLMD is naturopathic as well. And with all the antibiotics, I feel like I've destroyed my immune system and left cancer a wide open opportunity to invade. Since my diagnosis, I've tested positive for the breast cancer gene. My mother currently has stage 4 breast cancer and my grandmother had it. Just would like to get some info from you and your thoughts. I'm not sure what to do. I have three little kids who need their mother. I feel like maybe I should at least do chemo for them, but what if chemo is the wrong decision? My mother had a double mastectomy, did chemo and radiation. Her cancer came back after four years. Now it has spread. Good news is the hormonal therapy she's on now is working and shrinking her tumors. My grandmother was diagnosed 18 years ago, had a single mastectomy, and did some chemo. She's doing great. Thanks so much for your time, Chris. Any advice would be helpful. Okay, well, first of all, hi, Cindy. Thank you for writing, and I am going to um, give you my opinion. I'm not a doctor, but I've been exactly where you are, and I know how hard a decision this is. And so there's some information that I want to share with you that um, I believe will help and it's critical and, and it's something stuff that you need to know. Um, first of all, breast cancer specifically, a lot of people don't know this, the three biggest contributing factors to breast cancer other than the toxins in our environment, which are 80,000 plus chemicals, um, the first one is shaving and antiperspirant. Um, most deodorants and antiperspirants have aluminum in them, which is toxic and cancer causing. They have parabens and all kinds of chemicals in your deodorant and you're putting it on your skin. Uh, when you shave, you are oftentimes nicking the skin and it allows those toxins to penetrate right into the bloodstream. They'll be absorbed even if you don't nick yourself, but if you do, it's even worse. Um, the second problem is that when you shave, I'm sorry, the antiperspirant uh, blocks your perspiration. Well, guess what? That's where your body is dumping toxins through your lymphatic system. That's one of your major spots that it's pushing toxins out your underarms, your feet, your groin area, backs of your knees. Pretty much your whole entire skin is an elimination organ, um, but you do not want to block that pathway. Uh, because if it cannot push those toxins out here, they're going to be pushed further in to other lymph nodes and stored in lymph nodes in this area, the outer quadrant of the breast, which is where most breast cancers happen. I don't know where yours is, but I would, if I had to guess, it would probably be in the outer quadrant. Okay, that's cause number one. Cause number two is mammograms. You're radiating your breasts with cancer-causing radiation. Um, enough said there. Uh, it's been linked to causes of breast cancer. Increased mammograms and women that have had mammograms have increased incidences of breast cancer than those who don't. The third one is wearing a bra, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, there's a huge difference uh, in the amount of cancers in women that wear a bra more than 12 hours a day. Okay, so the goal is to not wear a bra 12 hours a day or more, to try to wear it as little as possible. So like, you know, when you're at home, try not to wear a bra. When you're out in the world, wear a bra, whatever. Um, never sleep in a bra because it restricts the flow of lymphatic fluid, uh, you know, and it, it, it gets all clogged up in there in your lymph nodes. And if your breast can't uh, detox, if the lymphatic fluid cannot flow through this area, it's going to come, you know, basically back up and get toxic in there. Um, 
Also, for any pregnant mothers or mothers, breastfeeding is one of the best preventions for breast cancer because it gets all the juices flowing in there. It sort of cleans out the system in your, in your breast. So anyway, that's enough about breasts. Let's talk about chemotherapy. There was a study that was published in 2004. It was a 14-year study done by doctors and researchers in Australia, and they studied uh, Australians and Americans all different types of cancers, and the, the name of the study, and you can look it up, there's also links to it at crispycancer.com, and I would encourage anybody watching this to read, of course, every post on my site, but the, the specific posts about chemotherapy, if you haven't read them yet, Cindy, please read them all, because there's really, really good information in there, but um, this is the most damning evidence I've ever seen, and this was published in the Journal of Clinical Oncology in 2004, so oncologists know about it, okay? Uh, this is not a secret study. It's just one they don't talk about. But anyway, um, so here's, here's what it's called. It's called the contribution of cytotoxic chemotherapy to five-year survival in adult malignancies, right? So they were trying to figure out uh, how effective is chemo really in uh, cancer patients surviving five years? Does it really work and how effective? So they broke it down per cancers, and there's charts that show you how many uh, people were diagnosed and how long they lived and what type of cancer they had and all that stuff. So in the group of Americans, they studied with breast cancer, okay, there were 31,133 Americans diagnosed with breast cancer that were a part of this study. Only 446 of them were alive after five years, okay? 31,000 in the beginning, five years later, 446. That's 1.4% effectiveness of chemotherapy. And by the way, the ones that were alive after five years, they weren't necessarily cancer-free. They were just still alive. So that's a 1.4% success rate or a 98.6% failure rate depending on how you look at it. When I was in the hospital after I had surgery, now I had my tumor taken out. Uh, they brought the oncologist in for me to meet him. It's part of their, their you know, their, te their techniques or tactics is they, they kind of want you to meet the, the next doctor in the process uh, and familiarize you with them. So they bring this oncologist in. He told me I would need six to nine months of chemotherapy. And so I just accepted it. I, I thought, okay, I guess that's, what I've got to do next. I got home and, you know, a few weeks later I'd sobered up, got off the pain medication, and I really did not have a piece about chemotherapy. Just like you said in your letter to me, um, you know, you don't have a good feeling about it. I didn't either. Then I started doing some research and the more I read about it, the more concerned I got because it destroys your immune system and it causes cancer. It's carcinogenic. So, <laughs> It can give you cancer, more cancers. And we all know people that have gone through chemo, they had cancer in one part of their body, they've gone through chemo, it comes back and it's everywhere. And that's from the chemo, okay? The chemo destroyed their immune system, caused secondary cancers, there's nothing left to fight the cancer. And uh, I can tell from your letter that that's what you're concerned about and you're right to be concerned because it's a real thing that's happening to thousands of cancer patients every day. Um, you can tell I feel pretty strongly about it. So let me check my notes real quick because I want to make sure I answered all your questions. Um, uh, obviously, your mother had the same experience. It's come back after four years. I'm really glad that, that the homo hormone therapy is working. That's a non-conventional therapy that, great, I'm glad they're, they're doing something besides more chemo. Um, as for your grandmother, you know that she was treated 18 years ago. And a lot of the drugs they're using today, they weren't using 18 years ago. And if I had to speculate, I would say I would bet that they might not have given her very much chemo or a very strong dose. And great, she's still here. That's wonderful. Um, okay. I think I've covered everything in your letter here, but I'm just reviewing it to make sure that there isn't anything else I wanted to tell you. Um that's it. If you have any other questions, Cindy, please feel free to email me back. Um, my wife and I will be praying for you. I'm going to add you to our list of people that we pray for. 
and um, please keep me posted on your decision and how you're doing. The main thing I want to leave you with is if you decide not to do chemo like I did, uh, obviously you've got to trust God to lead you in the path of healing, and that's that's so critical. Um, Jesus was my healer ultimately. You know that's who led me in the process, and I, I cast all my cares on Him, and He was faithful to lead me in the path of healing. Um, but please get your blood work done every month. Find a, local, a doctor of natural medicine and an MD that you can work with that will support you and not fight your decision to, to do it your way. Um, and that's what I did. And so uh, that way you can, you can pick a path that makes sense, whether it's the raw vegan diet or, or a lot of different you know, therapies that are out there. And hopefully my blog will give you some information that, uh, that you can use and to try to decide what your strategy is going to be. Um, the resources page on crispycancer.com has a lot of books on it, and they're, they're listed in priority. So I strongly encourage you you read those, and they will help you. They helped me a lot. Uh, they saved my life, really. Um, but anyway, so yeah, just make sure you're working with, a, with some doctors and you're monitoring your progress, and that way you, you can figure out what your body needs. Because what I did has worked for a lot of people, but it doesn't work for every single person. And so, because every body is different, and your body may need different things than mine did. So, anyway, um, hope that helps. God bless.